Uh -huh. Hi, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Spice of Life Variety Show. We bring you greetings and we want you to know that we love you and certainly you are indeed a very special person. Um, Bishop Blake and Mrs. Blake and the entire West Angeles family, from all of our hearts to your heart, we want you to know that we are honored to be in your presence. Well, as always, we ask that you will grab your pen and your paper because you just might want to contact our guests or contact us and uh, our contact information will be shown at the end of the show and uh, feel free to contact us with your prayer requests, show comments, show suggestions, whatever the case may be and uh, know that we again are honored to have you. Well, uh, for those who are regular watchers of the Spice of Life show, uh, Pamela Webb is not with me today but I do have a very, very very underline, underline, underline special person uh, in the studio with me today, and I'm so honored to have um, a wonderful, fine, outstanding young man uh, who is making marks here, there, and everywhere in a particular uh, community in our uh, California state. And so I want to introduce to you the wonderful mayor of Compton, who is heading the Birthing a New Compton campaign and changing the whole image of Compton in the person of the mayor, Mr. Eric Paradigm. Thank How you, you Dr. Doing? Lewis. <laughs> that was a great introduction. I'm going to send you a chick in the mail, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to send you your invoice in the mail. Oh, you got it. <laughs> Eric J. What does J stand for? Wait a minute, let me see. James, Jimmy. Close, Joseph. Really? Jesus' father. I earthly have a, father. I have a son named Joseph. Yes. So Eric Joseph. Yes, ma'am. Paradigm. Now, Paradigm, what kind of name is that? That's French Creole. French Creole. Yes. Who, so your roots are from Louisiana? Yes, ma'am. All right. Do you know anything about that Louisiana cooking? Uh, I know a lot about it. I had some gumbo last <laughs> night. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> did you do it yourself? Or no, you? I don't cook a lick. Cause <laughs> my mama made it. All right. Hey, man. <laughs> right on, mama. Hey, mad at mama. Uh, I was at a setting recently uh, where you introduced your mama. Your mom looked really well. Yeah, she's still active. She's 82. Matter of fact, her bir birthday is tomorrow. September 14th. Really? Yes. And your mama is in her 80s? 82, and she's still as spry as ever. That's what I'm talking yes. about. I never would have imagined. Yes. That's great. Well, today we are talking about Meet Mayor Eric Paradine, and so we just want to find out uh, about you. Uh, we know that you're the mayor, the honorable mayor, but we also know that you're Eric uh, Paradine, the man, and so we just kind of want to inquire and find out uh, what's going on. Now, are you from Jamaica? I know you're not from uh, Louisiana, but where are you from? I'm from, I love reggae music, so <laughs> I do love Jamaica, but I'm actually from, I was born in Linwood, California, and I've been raised in Compton my whole life. And so it's just, uh, well, it's just really, um, Something that you were, you were born there and your heart has never left Compton, huh? No, it hasn't. I, I love Compton. and if, if all the people leave, you'll never be able to make a change. So mm. we're trying to get people to come back to Compton so we can make Compton what it once was and even better than what it used to be. Wow. Well, I know I was just recently at a, a gathering, uh, the concert, gospel concert in the park at the California Golf Course, I mean, uh, Compton Golf Course, because there is a golf course in Compton, huh? That's right. That's Com what I'm talking about. Yeah, Compton Part 3 Golf Course. <laughs> All right. And it was such an outstanding event. No one could have topped that in the presentation and the, in the talent and all of that. And so my hat is off to you because you didn't just do a drive-by where you came by high and you were gone, but you were there all day long and was an intricate part of that, huh? Yes, uh, I can't take all the credit for it without the help of the volunteers and, and our uh, city employees and most importantly, Vernon Porter. Oh, uh, outstanding lady. All, all of us together as a team were able to put that concert on. And one thing we tried to show 
the first class that you can have in Compton. And we wanted to say, what we can offer in Compton is just as good or better you can get in Beverly Hills or Malibu or Manhattan Beach. Well, may I say, Matt Stamp, that is job well done. Thank the you. job accomplished. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. <laughs> now, you may mention about your mom. Uh, what about your father? My father passed away uh, on Father's Day in 1987. On Father's Day? He actually died on uh, Father's Day. <sighs> That's deep. It is, but uh, he, he, he did a lot for me. I learned a lot from my dad. and. I know he's in a better place, and he's with the Lord, and hopefully, I know one day I'm going to meet him up oh. in heaven. So, uh, do you, would you say you look more like your, you favor more like your father or your mother? More like my dad. Okay. Uh, older I get, they tell me the more I look like my dad. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's Not a little lighter than I was, though. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, you have a nice, beautiful skin tone. Oh, thank skin you. Color. <laughs> you have sisters and brothers? I have an older brother, Percy, who's 13 years older than me. Uh, I had an older sister. She passed away in 1978, mm -hmm. and I have a younger sister, uh, Yvette. Oh, okay. And so you're just right there in the middle, huh? Yes, yeah. Now, you made a, a, a public statement on um, recently when we were together, uh, and uh, you said, I'm 48, and I'm still at home with my mama. Hello. They call me a mama's boy, but so what? Oh. Let, let, first, let me give you some depth okay. on that. <laughs> <laughs> I like <laughs> that. I like that. Now, now, now uh, are you often teased about that? You know, when I was younger, my, my best friends, they used to always tease me about that. You know, he's living at home with his mama. But <laughs> as you get older, people respect the fact that you still uh, stay with your mom. Mm -hmm. And women really love it because they say if you can tell a man how he's going to treat you by the way he treat his, treats his mother. So okay, Come on, give me some more. <laughs> <laughs> That, well, that's well. That's really what came to my mind when, when you made that statement. I said, "Okay, well, well, if, if a girl is smart, then she knows that if, in fact, he honors his mom, and, and it, it wasn't something that you hear, you call for your mom, you recognize your mom, you honor your mom publicly, and um, and and that's what we need more of. Yes. You know, you can never man up to the degree that uh, you lose uh, sight of." your mom or, or, or the female in, female in your life. Huh? That's true. I always love my mama. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Do you tend to be more, well, I know as a, as a mother, our, our children are close to us, but would you say that you tend to be closer to your mom in, in an aspect maybe that your other siblings are not? Or Oh, yeah, just naturally the fact that I live with mm -hmm. her. Uh, I'm uh, probably, I'm closer to her, but she loves all of us equally. Of course. Uh, <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you, um, uh, is marriage on the horizon? Or? So, you know, I would love to get married one day, yeah. uh, but I, some things I want to finish with the city first. Oh, okay. And I think marriage is a big commitment, mm -hmm. and when I do make that step, if that's what in, in, in my life God wants me to do, I want to make sure I'm totally committed to that woman. Because, because just from talking to you, you tend to be committed. Whatever you're working with, it has your full attention. That's true. And right now, this mayor's job, which is actually a part-time job, mm -hmm. takes up a lot of my time as well as my regular job as a deputy district attorney. As a DA, huh? Yes, ma'am. So you go into the courtroom, huh? Every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. How... Did you always want to uh, be in law? Because not only were you, not only are you um, uh, serving as the mayor and and as a DA, but you also was a detective, a po police officer. All that. Where did all of this law get into your blood? Where did that come from? Uh, part of it came as a kid. I used to look at Perry Mason a lot. Uh oh. -uh. So I always wanted to be an attorney. The police part of it came. Um, after I graduated from school, I left UCLA, went to Long Beach City College, and then I transferred to Cal State Dominguez Hills. Once I left UCLA, I really didn't have the respect for the other academic institutions, so I kind of slacked. Okay. And I let my grades slip. Okay. Now, they didn't go down too much, but I wanted to get into a top flight law school, and I know with having a GPA around 3.1, 3.2 wasn't going to get me in the type of law school <laughs> I wanted to get in. So I decided, I said, well, my brother was a police officer at the time. I said, I'll be a police officer for about five years. I'll get that experience under my belt. Then I'll apply uh, for law school. So that's how I got into law. Mm. I have a nephew who's also a, a, a policeman oh. um, with the Sierra Madre. And so oh. uh, you, whenever really and truly, uh, whenever I see police 
uh, officers uh, I like and I want to encourage you artists too whenever you see uh, officials policemen firemen etc uh, say thank you because they're putting they're being on the front line because no matter what uh, you may think they are the first ones you call yes. and so uh, just on behalf of all of us to to you and to all of you thank you for putting yourself out there thank you know you. what I'm saying serious on a serious note thank you Dr. Uh, because there's no respect there's not the respect that it used to be for law enforcement officers and and the like and so uh, I really 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 appreciate um, you doing that I and having a heart a passion to do it not you, it's not just a job you know you can always tell when it's a job huh? yes you can tell you can tell when somebody's really into it or uh, or they just doing it just to get a paycheck for a paycheck huh okay now j let's just roll the tape back a little bit describe your childhood what kind of what kind of uh, young man or uh, boy was Eric Joseph Perrin well my parents at the time uh, they could afford to send myself and my sister to Catholic schools okay. my my older sister and my older brother they went to Catholic schools up to high school okay and my my parents couldn't afford to send them to a Catholic high school. Okay. So they both uh, went to Compton High School and graduated from there. We all went to, me and my sister, we went to uh, St. Albert's. I started at St. Albert's, the great Catholic school in Compton. I uh, transferred over to Our Lady of Victory in Compton, and I finished at Pius X High School mm. in Downey. Mm. But as a child, I said I had a great childhood. I had two parents in the home, mm. which I was fortunate because a lot of the black families don't have have that. It's usually raised by a single female parent. Right. So I exactly. had both parents in the house. Uh, they gave me, and I said they didn't give me everything I wanted, but I had opportunities that a lot of kids didn't have. So I had a fantastic childhood. Mm, 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 and we all have some issues, but that's part of life. Uh, you know, my father at one time, he, he drank a lot mm -hmm. and he was hanging out at the gas station, mm -hmm. but he pulled himself up Great. and uh, made a career uh, as, uh, started off as custodian and mm -hmm. janitor, mm -hmm. then he moved himself up. He was, when he passed away, he was the uh, second in charge of general services in the city of Compton. Really? Yes. So your, so Compton has just been on your, in your family's blood from day one, uh, s sounds like. It has, uh, and, and a comment about my mom, my mom, she started off working as a crossing guard in the city of Compton. <laughs> and I remember she was making a dollar sixty-five an hour. Wow. And then she uh, became a cafeteria worker. Wow. So my, my parents, I really respect them and love them for the f sacrifices that they made mm -hmm. to, to allow their children to have a better life than they did. Mm -mm -mm, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, do you find that because you grew up around Compton and people uh, know you went to school with them, et cetera, does that uh, have a tendency to uh, impact your job or do you find people calling and saying, can you hook a brother up? Can you hook a sister up? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're always looking for the hook up. The hook you know? up, yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't really come across that too much. Uh, it's really a benefit because people know that you're with them. Uh, I, I'm not looking down on them. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows where I live. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been living there. Uh, the current address we're living at now, we moved there in 1964. Wow. And so everyone knows, oh, that's the Over mayor. 40 years. Over 40 years. So everybody knows where I live. And I think it's really a benefit. And I went to Catholic schools, and most of the people in Compton didn't attend, oh, yeah, attend that's the right. public schools. That's so right. I had the, the Catholic side of me, but at the same time, when I got out of school, I would go up to our neighborhood parks, like Wilson Park, mm -hmm. and I played on the flag football team, basketball team, the baseball team, soccer. Athletic, huh? Yeah, very athletic. Okay. Yeah, so that gives, gave me a balance. I, I could be in both worlds. Mm -hmm. So I'm really blessed that uh, I was given that opportunity. A lot of people didn't have that opportunity. Can you still uh, do anything with the ball this day and time? I can dribble it, but <laughs> I, I can't take it to the hole because okay. those knees are gone. <laughs> <laughs> those knees said the heart may be willing, but the body ain't, <laughs> ain't, ain't going nowhere. <laughs> that's that's amazing. Uh, what are some of your hobbies? Um, I love to, uh, I like bike riding. I yeah. really haven't had an opportunity to go too often. Uh, Tour de France just ended, and I'm glued to the TV looking at the really? Tour de France. I, I love bike ride, riding. Really? I was I was fortunate enough to have uh, someone at the parks named Terry Matthews. Uh -huh. He taught me, who exposed me to bicycle riding. Uh -huh. And as a kid, we actually rode to uh, San Francisco. It was a seven-day trip. Are you serious? Yeah. Unfortunately for me, I think I crashed the second day out, and <sighs> I wasn't able to ride again until 
the last day when we was riding into San Francisco. Wow. So I was really been blessed with some of the opportunities that I've had. Wow. Oh, also, I like to play dominoes. Yeah. Oh, dominoes. Yeah. Any uh, card game. <laughs> uh, How good are you? Well, I tend not to lose. <laughs> oh, okay. And you, gotta, you know you got to talk a little bit. Too, <laughs> oh, you right? got to talk about the jab. You know, you know, you know, got to have a talking game because that's, that, that, that's really more than just a playing game. It like, is. Talk you, your way. You, you know? talk your way. You distract them. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also like. Uh, I like to walk. I love gospel music. I love jazz, and I'm a big fan of reggae music. Real. Yes. Really? Yes, loves can, loves some reggae music. Can you sing? Can't sing a lick. <laughs> when I'm in the shower, I sound real good. <laughs> to yourself. Yeah, give, give myself a Grammy. <laughs> nobody else can touch that. Can't, can't nobody touch, touch that up. Can't touch that. Oh, wow. What about an instrument? Do you play an instrument? I don't. I w if I could, I would love to play the saxophone. Really? Yes. I, I love saxophone. I think it's a, it's a very uh, romantic instrument. I agree. The sound. Wow. Well, you never know. As, as accomplished as you are and, and always d going to do this and that and everything else, you never know. You might pick up the sax on the side. Hopefully one day I will. When I have some time, I would love to learn how to I play I wouldn't sax. put it past you. Yeah. Hopefully I still have the oxygen to blow, <laughs> blow it. <laughs> <laughs> that, now that is quite important. Yes. Uh, you said uh, you you like gospel music. Who might be your one of your favorite or a couple of your favorite, whatever? Well, I like uh, Pastor Hutchins. Um, you better say that name, uh, Norman uh, Hutchins. I love <laughs> Pastor Norman Hutchins. I, I, I just love him. Uh, <laughs> I love the William Brothers. Uh -huh. <laughs> Everybody is at the top. Oh, Starlight. Starlight. <laughs> Shekinah <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Dorinda Clark. Dorinda Clark. I love Shirley Caesar. Mm. And it's not too many uh, gospel artists, because when they sing, it's a message in the music. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not too many I say I don't like. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. I like the old traditional yeah, though. Yeah. I, I really like that. Really? But some of the modern art artists, I love them too. I like Jay Moss. Is, he's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, you, you covering uh, anybody else we need? To <laughs> 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 I, I think I hit them all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it, it's amazing because I, I was very impressed with the passion of your heart uh, when we uh, a few months ago had a uh, conference and. Um, and there you were sitting in that conference and and not just like <sighs> okay can we hurry up and you know I mean you were sit, 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 sitting attentively and 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 been a part of and just really being com you know just commendable you know? well I, I really love learning and my my uh, desire to know more about the Lord has really increased um, recently I started attending Sunday school and as a Catholic we don't go to Sunday school right. we go to church <laughs> right so um, I've been going to Sunday school now probably about two and a half three years uh -huh. and when I miss it it's just like it's, it's like a, a knife just pierced my heart I said wow. I'm missing something wow. so learning about the Lord and uh, from the Old Testament especially in Catholic school they teach you a lot about the New Testament mm -hmm but not so much about the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And I've really been blessed in learning more about the Old Testament. And I can use the analogies of the Israelites to Compton today. Mm. Uh, one analogy I like to use is when uh, God's people left Egypt mm -hmm. and Moses was leading them, mm -hmm. they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years mm -hmm. for the, because of their disobedience. Mm -hmm. And even Moses didn't get over to the Promised Land. Mm -hmm because of his disobedience. The only people over 20, God said, only the people 20 and below mm -hmm. will reach the promised land. Joshua and Caleb were the only two. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I use that analogy with the city of Compton. You know, I don't equate myself with uh, Moses by no stretch of the imagination. Yeah, but you're the leader. But I'm the leader. Mm -hmm. And I'm hopeful, hopeful, I would love to be the person to take Compton to the promised land mm -hmm. to say, but if not, I have to make sure there's some Joshua's and some Caleb's behind me to make sure that we do get to the promised land one mm. day. So learning about God and, and, and the Bible is just it's amazing and you can apply it to your everyday life. That's amazing and, and you actually really, really and truly can. Yes. Uh, a lot of answers can be found uh, in there. What are your favorite colors? Uh, I love every color. I just, I, I just love colors. You but just I, love, love, yeah, love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I love blue. Blue is probably my favorite color. Is that why you have on blue shirt? Well, I was making sure uh, 
if shows right on TV. <laughs> <laughs> a man with that experience, huh? Yes, ma'am. Let me ask you this, Mr. Eric Joseph Perrin. How would you describe yourself? A uh, very outgoing person. I love people. Uh, I, I yearn for knowledge. Uh, I have a great sense of humor. I love to laugh. I love helping people. I was probably, uh, to analyze my life, I was looking back, I said, you know what, you really like helping people. All the jobs I've ever had is dealing with helping people. Mm -hmm. I was a cop, mm -hmm. a DA, mayor. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. And I notice even now, if I see someone doing something with, to someone else that I think is not proper, I'm always willing mm -hmm. to go step in there to try to help that person who seemed to be weaker than that other person. Wow, so. wow well, that's commendable. You don't mind taking a, a, a few hits, huh? <laughs> I don't, and I think uh, God has, he, he prepared, God doesn't ever put you in a situation that he doesn't prepare you for. So if I get into that situation, he's already prepared me for it. Oh, my. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, Do you go to the gym? Do you? I used to. I used to. I, I forgot that's one of my, that's probably <laughs> one of my favorite things, it's wa uh, uh, weightlifting. Uh -huh. oh, really? But I just don't have the time. I, usually I s I'll go to the gym three, four hours. Really? Yeah, I just love being in the gym, talking to the people in the gym. Mm -hmm. So I love lifting weights. But now the only thing I can do is some push-ups and occasional <laughs> sit-ups. I need to work on that. Oh, no, no, no. I, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't look this at all. Don't you go to the gym? No, no, no. I, I think you're in, 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 in good shape, you know. Thank you. Uh -huh, I do. Uh, what would you say? maybe it's misunderstood about Eric uh, Joseph? I think most people kind of can read me pretty well. They think I'm a, a humble person, which I think I am, mm -hmm. which I know I am. Mm -hmm. But some people, I think I'm confident, and some people take my confidence for arrogance. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not an arrogant person. I'm just confident in <laughs> what God has made me. I'm, I'm, I'm a child of the Most High King, so mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be confident. Mm -hmm. But I'm not arrogant. I think that's probably might be the most misunderstood. Mm -hmm. But I don't think a lot of people hold that view, but some people do. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and it's going to always be people who, I don't care what you do, what you say, how you do, how you say, they're going to always twist it around because they're only going to want to think what they want to think. That's true, Dr. No matter Lewis. how well you might. Now, what have been some of your more personal, because we're not talking about the mayor right now, what has been some of Eric Joseph's more memorable occasions? Most of my best memories came from my first year in college at UCLA. Mm -hmm. I just had some great times there. It was the first time being away from the house <laughs> and meeting different people from different places across the United States. I had a roommate that was from Detroit uh, he taught me so much, mm -hmm. exposed me to so many different things. My dad always told me, he said, enjoy high school and college because they're going to be the best times of your life because mm -hmm. then you got to be an adult <laughs> and have responsibility. And he was so right. Mm -hmm. That first year at UCLA was very memorable. I had a lot of mem good memories being a police officer, mm -hmm. some not so good. Mm -hmm. I had a time where a gentleman who was on uh, PCP took my gun wow. and I had to fight him and some other guy for my wow. gun. Wow, wow. But it's a, it was a good experience because the Lord, I'm going to tell you how good the Lord is. I had broken my hand, and that same day, the doctor had taken the cast off my hand. And, and he said, you can go out in the street and patrol, but do not, but do not use your hand to hit anybody. So when this guy took my, took my gun from me, I couldn't even use my hand mm. at the time. Mm. But because I used to lift weights. Okay. I think I overpowered this guy. Okay. Uh, well, I know I did by the grace of God. And once I got that gun from two two people, I just stood in the middle of the street and I said, "Lord, thank you, mm. thank you, Jesus." Mm. And I could care less about them getting away. <laughs> uh, but eventually, after I thanked the Lord, I put it out on the radio, <laughs> gave a description. They caught him. So that was a memorable experience. And we had a lot of good memories, just helping people out in the community. I could go on and on and. Saturday, Dr. Lewis, a lady came up to me. She said, you might not remember me, but back in 1985, wow. my uh, granddaughter was kidnapped by her father. And you, you, you did a sting and was able to get our granddaughter back. And that just really touched me. And her granddaughter was actually at the concert. That's she was 20, 21 years old now That's at the amazing. time. So things like that. They'll come up to me now and say, hey, Eric, you gave me a break when, I, when you was a cop. I don't really remember. <laughs> but it, it really touched my heart. They said, you know what? If you wouldn't have gave me that break, there's no telling where I might have ended up. That's amazing. 
So, so really and truly, um, you know, we, we, we're not responsible, not in charge of the day that we were born. And if we die, natural cause of the day that we die, but we are responsible and can control that dash. And That's right. There. That and it sounds like uh, you have a pretty good dash, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I got some faults there. Yeah. Oh, of enough, course. Yeah, I got you a whole lot from, of You didn't fly from heaven now. <laughs> no, no, no. Got a long way to go. Right. Uh, something I like to tell the audience, too. Yes. I'm, I'm currently a deputy district attorney at the airport court. And what I do for the district attorney's office, I just make deals. Uh, I try to settle cases before they go to trial. And the judge I work with is uh, Judge Keith Swartz. Uh, he happens to be Jewish. And he allows me, both of us work real good, and the public defenders in the courtroom, we work real good in trying to stop, uh, we call them kids, because they, they 18, 19, 20 years old, and they really haven't been in that criminal justice system, stop them from coming back. Mm. So we really spend a lot of time lecturing them, uh, scaring them. So if there's anyone in the audience who would just like to bring a child or even a young adult that's going off into that wrong path, I would love for you to come to, to the courtroom, to my courtroom, and tell me why you're there, and we see if we can do something to try to turn that person's life around. Wow. That's at LA uh, Airport Court. It's right where the 105 and the 405 meet. I'm on the ninth floor in Department 144. Wow, that's really been coming, but like scared straight. Uh, yes, we do our own version <laughs> of it. <laughs> well, well. I was going to say Mr. Mayor, but anyway, Eric Joseph Paradon, it has been great having you on the show. Um, you are very outgoing. You're embracing. You're warm. Uh, your mom did. A, your mom and dad did an excellent, excellent job. And um, if you represent your other siblings, they they are going. Your mom and dad are going to get crowns so high that they can't even carry the. the you know, can't even walk because it's so high. Mm. But uh, thank you for being on our show, and and we just want you to know that we love you and. And uh, I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Dr. Lewis, for having me on your show. I appreciate it. <laughs> and to you, our audience, we want you to know that we have enjoyed meeting Eric Joseph Paradon, uh, a man uh, who is not a slouch, but a man who is on the move. God bless you. Pursue your dream. You can become great in your own passion and in your own way. Until next time, know that we love you. Jot down our contact information, and we'll see you later. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. <laughs> <laughs>